Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 3 from Module 4. The Relationship of Multiplication and Addition. Opening exercise says, write two different expressions that can be depicted by the table diagram shown. One expression should include addition, while the other should include multiplication. Okay. So, take a few moments, see if you can come up with an addition problem for these models, and a multiplication problem. I'll pause the video, and then I will explain what we will be doing to answer these questions. Okay, now that you've given this an opportunity, hopefully, then what I would do here is say, okay, well, that's one, that's two, and that's three, so that is a three. And if I'm going to make this addition, three plus three plus three. Okay. Now, I'm also going to focus on this word here, expression. Expressions do not have equal signs or sums or products or solutions. An expression is simply an operation of with variables and numbers. So this is an expression in addition. So now if I were to do multiplication, well, there's three, and there are three of them. So if I multiply by three, three times three is nine, three plus three plus three is nine. Okay, so part B, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight plus eight. Or I could say eight, and there's two groups of eight, so that's eight times two. Okay. Part C. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So if we're doing sums, it's 5 plus 5 plus 5, or 5 groups, 3 times. Exercise 1. Write the addition sentence that describes the model, and the multiplication sentence that describes the model. So this is the same as up here, except they're stacked up on each other. This is one, two, three, four, five. So I and this is five, and this is five. So I can say five plus five plus five, or five times. Write an addition sentence that describes the model. A multiplication sentence that describes the model. So 5 plus 5 plus 5, or 5 times. Number 2. Write an equivalent expression to demonstrate the relationship of multiplication and addition. Okay. So when I see 6 plus 6, that's a repeat of the number 6, and it's repeated 2 times. So we could say 2 times 6. Or we could say 6 times 2, but this would make more sense. You're saying 2 times 6. This is a 3, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and we see it 6 times, so 6 times 3. Okay? 4, multiplication, how many times is that there? It's repeated 5 times, 5 times 4. Okay? And then 6 times 2 means we're going to write 2 six times. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Okay. E means we're going to have 6 four times. 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6. So it's really the second number repeated the number of times the third, first number says. So this is 9 repeated 3 times. 9 plus 9 plus 9. And G, now we've switched over to variables. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 H's. 
so it's just simply going to be 5 times h. And you can put a dot there, but with variables, there's nothing needed. You don't even need the dot. A 5h means 5 times h. Just like in the h, this is a 6y. There is no dot in between. 6y just simply means y plus y plus y plus y plus y plus y. Sound like a broken record, but there are six y's there. Y plus y plus y, plus y plus y plus y. Six y. All right, number three. Roberto is not familiar with tape diagrams and believes that he can show the relationship of multiplication and addition on a number line. Help Roberto demonstrate that the expression of three times two is equivalent to two plus two plus two on a number line. Take a moment, try to figure this out. And I'll be right. Okay, so while you were working on those, I created two number lines. And I went from 0 to 10. 0 to 10. Tried to make them pretty accurately separated, equal distance apart. And so the one way we could do it is the first number line shows that there are three groups of two. So what I could do is you start at 0. And if you have a group of two, it gets you to here. If you have another group of two, it's going to bring you to here. And if you have a third group of two, it's going to bring you to there. Okay. The second number line could show a sum of two plus two plus two. So how do we show sums? We show them as arrows starting at zero. Plus two is an arrow. Plus two more is another arrow. And plus two more would bring me to my answer of six. Okay, so I should probably start at zero, show a dot, go up to plus two, put a dot, go up to, put a dot, go up to, put a dot. Okay. Since both number lines start at zero and end at six, the expressions are equal. Same starting point, same finishing point, expressions are equal. It's basically Number four, tell whether the following equation or equations are true or false. Then explain the reason. Okay, so this is kind of going back to lesson one, where we have a variable x, we're adding six g's to it, but then we're taking away those six g's and we end up with x. Okay, this right here. It's the same as saying x plus 0, 6g minus 6g is 0, equals x, and therefore x does indeed equal x. So the inverse, the additive inverse, positive 6g and negative 6g, additive inverses give you the identity. Adding ident an identity to a number gives you the same number. So therefore, x is equal to x. Okay? So that is true because of the addition identity. Okay? Now here we have 2f. We take away 4e, then we add 4e back. So if you look right here, that is a minus 4e, a plus 4e. So that would be the same as saying 2f plus nothing, 0, because negative 4e plus 4e are additive inverses, and that would give us 2f plus 0, okay? Subtraction, identity, addition of a negative, same thing. 2f plus 0 is 2f, so therefore 2f equals 2f. That is also true, okay? Number 5 says, write an equivalent expression to demonstrate the relationship between addition and multiplication. So here I have 6. It's there 4 times. So I'd say 4 times 6. Okay. Plus 4 3 times. So that would be 3 times the 4. So 6 is here 4 times. 4 you see 3 times. So that you say how many repeat repetitions there are of that so 4 times 6 plus 3 times 4. And if you do that, you 
get 24 plus 12 equals 36. I didn't say to solve this. 6 plus 6 is 12, 6 is 18, plus 6 is 24, plus 4 is 28, plus 4 is 32, plus 4 is 36, and we also got 36 here. So I was just taking that one step further, but it asked for an expression, and therefore it would just simply be that. Alright, part B. I see D three times, so I'd say three times D, plus other different terms. W, and there's one, two, three, four, five W's, so that'd be five W. Um, I could do it like this, but we want to start getting away from using X for multiplication simply because X can be used as a variable, and this looks too much like three times some X times some D. So we are now going to get rid of these X's. Okay, and actually I made a mistake here. It's not 5 times 5, it's 5 times W. And I don't want those X's anymore, so to clean this up and avoid confusion, it's 3D, 3 times D, plus 5 times W. Okay, so if you are still using an X for multiplication, it's probably a good idea to stop for that reason. Alright, so now we have A, and there's two of them, so we say 2A, plus B, and there's three of them, so that's 3B, plus C, and there are four of them, so that would be 4C. Okay. That is the end of lesson three. Go do your problems.